Good morning and welcome, everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com, and this is Trading Places Live. It is Tuesday, January 7th, 2020. I uh, can't believe first week in the books for 2020. Hope everybody had a great holiday season. Um, good to have you back. And I uh, tell you, the market looks still looks pretty good. I mean, despite uh, the airstrike in Baghdad last week and some of the fallout there, uh, the market, uh, despite having uh, futures weak uh, the last couple of days, both yesterday and back on Friday, the market has uh, responded pretty well. And I think that's the sign of a bull market. It just tends to overlook everything. Um, every time we get a little piece of news, if you're waiting for a pullback, you think, okay, this is it. And then the market just continues to push back to the upside. I do think there's room to the downside, but uh, uh, you know, trying to predict exactly when it's going to happen and how far it might pull back is really difficult. I think the big thing to take it from all of this right now is that we've broken out. We're in all-time high territory, and we are in secular bull market mode. All right, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, what we're going to be doing today. You can see we've got daily market recap, as always. Uh, talking technically, I'm going to look a little bit at the uh, internet group. I had a really good day yesterday, so I'm going to break down that internet group a little bit during talking technically. Got upgrades and downgrades uh, for you. Citigroup went through a number of uh, medical uh, companies, a lot of healthcare stocks getting upgrades uh, from or being initiated by uh, Citigroup with uh, buys. So maybe you have a take a look at some of those. Get into relatively speaking. I want to go through my industry group relative strength chart list and just point out the leading group over the last month. Uh, you might find it a little surprising. And then we'll wrap up the show with three you must see which is where I always like to give you three stocks just based on doing whatever they're doing. Something on their charts just looks interesting. I think it's something that's noteworthy. So I will point those out for you, and then we will wrap up the show. I do want to mention that uh, next Monday, so uh, just six days from today, uh, I will be having an event, the January effect, and my top 15 stocks for 2020. Uh, the January effect, if you're not aware, is simply how the S&P 500 does in January. That has a, at least historically, has had a significance as to how the rest of the year will go. So the old saying, Wall Street adage is, as January goes, so goes the year. And uh, just to give you an indication, 2019, for instance, we had a really strong January. It placed us in the top quadrant, top 25% of January's dating back to 1950 and the balance of the years in the books. I mean, we know what happened. We had a huge year in 2019. The average return balance of the year for these top Januaries from February 1st to December 31st tends to tackle another 17, 18% over and above the huge January you just had. So it really does tend to be a predictor. And I wanna go through those, go through the quadrants, give you some idea of maybe what to expect historically based on what we see here over the next few weeks. So, uh, and then I'll go through 15 stocks I think have been, have gone through significant basing periods, most of them uh, breaking out, I think look really strong as we go into 2020. And these are 15 stocks I certainly would wanna keep an eye on. Um, but I'll go through all that uh, on Monday of next week. So Monday, January 13th, mark your calendar. I'll talk a little bit more about it on Thursday, give you uh, more information, but, uh, if you uh, are so inclined, you can go to earningsbeats.com. You can sign up for a $7 30-day trial, and uh, more information will be forthcoming there for sure. All right, let's uh, head into the market recap uh, for yesterday. And let's start off here. You can see the Dow Jones Industrial Average up 68 points. We did gap lower, as I said, last couple of days, Friday and then yesterday. We had these we had futures down, market open low. I think everybody was nervous, and for the second straight day, we rebounded. In fact, we had a pretty strong rebound yesterday. Uh, the Dow uh, finished yesterday at 28.703, and you can see we opened down near the 20-day moving average below 28.5. So it was a nice recovery yesterday. S&P 500 also up 11 points. NASDAQ up 51. The small caps uh, rebounded quite a bit after being below their 20-day moving average, but they did fall just short of moving into positive territory. They lost a point yesterday. 10-year Treasury yield currently uh, just down a, a bit, uh, almost one basis point, 1.8%. The uh, XLC was the leading 
um, sector, communication services, nice breakout there. Energy also having a pretty nice day. Healthcare bouncing off 20 day moving average looking like uh, uh, it looks pretty good. The only thing I would say here is that um, unlike some of the others, I think we do have a negative divergence here that we wanna watch out for. We may just see more consolidation with healthcare. See the higher price and that lower PPO. It's unlike energy, which is moving up and you can see a really nice strong PPO there. Um, within the communication services group, the internet stocks, really nice day yesterday, led by a couple of the big leaders. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that in just a, mi in just a bit, but there is your internet stock breaking out. Stocks were up more than 2% as a group yesterday. Materials, that was the big laggard yesterday. Had a bearish engulfing candle last Thursday to open the year. And off of that, we have seen some additional selling, which is not too shocking. I suspect that will probably turn around sooner rather than later. Uh, maybe we go back down about 58 and a half and challenge this uh, December low. But my guess is we're probably about to turn back to the upside on the materials group. All right, as far as the, uh, let's look at the 10-year treasury yield here. Um, as far as economic reports out, at 10 o'clock this morning, we'll get the November factory orders. Market is expecting a drop of 7 tenths of 1%. There are really, the, I looked at the consensus estimates, they are all over the place. I think I saw anywhere from like minus 1.8% to positive 3%. So who knows where, Factory orders are going to come in, but the consensus is minus 0.7%. Also, December ISM non-manufacturing index uh, will be out later this morning. 54.5 is the estimate there. Tomorrow morning, ADP employment. Uh, and then on Friday, the biggie, non-farm payrolls. And um, I can tell you that the one economic report to me that is the uh, biggest by far, non-farm payrolls, jobs. Uh, that is the way I look at jobs is it's almost like the um, the economy's earnings report, if you will. Uh, when I look at an individual stock, there's really nothing bigger than an earnings report in just about every area except maybe biotech, where FDA announcements tend to be much bigger. But you get into just about any other area of the market, earnings are the big deal. Well, when you're looking at the stock market and you're looking at the economic picture, uh, non-farm payrolls is big. And I've done charts, I've shown charts where I use a 12 month rate of change on jobs. And that has been the best predictor of recessions going back the last seven decades. It's hit every single one of them. So, you know, don't worry about an ISM report here or there, maybe showing a contraction on manufacturing, follow the jobs. That's the, that's the number you really wanna pay attention to. That'll be out, latest one will be out on Friday. All right, let's move on. Let's get into uh, talking technically. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit today about the internet group. We had a really strong day yesterday. I think that was important. When you look at this chart, and I'm going to pull this up on a weekly chart because I want to be able to annotate this and show you what I'm looking at. If you actually, let's uh, move this back even further. Let's get out of this. This is just three years. Let's go back uh, seven years. But I think here you can see the pattern much better than just on the three-year chart. You can see a really strong uptrend. Uptrends generally are followed by continuation patterns, basing patterns, um, consolidation, and that's what the internet group went through. So let's look at this and annotate this for a second because I think the breakout that we've seen so far here uh, is really important. Kind of eh, right about there, you can see the highs being connected. So we got the triple top, um, but off of this uptrend, I'm seeing, I mean, it's, it would be a really sloppy inverse head and shoulders because normally the top would be over here and this uh, first, uh, side, the left side of the neckline would be lower than this top. So I don't really go with that, but what I would go with is an ascending triangle. And if you look at this from here up to here, I think you can see that we have rising bottoms and equal highs. That is an ascending triangle. So you've got the uptrend, continuation pattern, you expect it to break to the out upside, it did. And then the th next thing you do is you measure it. So we're up near 1900 at these highs, the lows maybe around 1350, that's 550 points. So when you break out at 1900, I'm looking for a measurement of 2450. 
So if you're wondering how I might get to my outrageous prediction of the S&P 500 moving above 4,000 in 2020, this is one of the patterns that tells me that it absolutely could happen. Uh, we've got the internet stocks poised to maybe move up another 20% from where we are right now. That would be the initial measurement. So what do we do with this? All right, so we're starting off, we're bull I'm bullish the market, I'm bullish in internet stocks. So where do we go? Well, what I would suggest is we go into um, the scooter reports. Once we have a group that we like, go into those scooter reports there. And large cap, what I can do here is just simply type in internet. And it brings up all the large cap stocks in scooter order. So I could go down the list. What I will tell you is Activision Blizzard. Well, let's go ahead and pull the chart up. Activision Blizzard looks really good on the daily chart. And actually on the weekly chart, it's not bad either. It's staying above the 20 day, or excuse me, 20 week moving average. But it's still $22, $23 from where it was uh, 15 months ago. So it's recovering, but it's recovering slowly. There was a lot of selling here. I'm okay with this one. I'm a little nervous. Um, one thing to consider with these scooter rankings is that it basically only goes back and looks at the last five or six months. So even though it uses longer term, quote unquote, longer term um, moving averages and so forth and rate of change, it doesn't go back beyond about five or six months. So that's why a stock like this has a really good scooter score, because if you look at what it's been doing the last five or six months, moved up quite a bit. I mean, we're talking about low to mid 40s up to 60. It's been a really nice move. So that's how an ATVI is going to get a really nice scooter score. But even though Google is a little bit lower in the scooter, I like this stock a lot better. Um, so Google doesn't look much different here on the daily chart, but let's look at the weekly chart. Here you can see we've easily cleared these prior highs. We have equal highs coming across, rising lows. This is another ascending triangle. Here from about 1,300 down to 980, that's 320 points. That measures to 1620. We're at 1397 right now. Google, I think, looks really good. Now, I'd prefer it on a 20-week test or maybe even on a 20-day test if we go back to that daily chart. Uh, we just had a couple of those, but if you, know, you get another one, you get another pullback, I think that would be the time. But Google, look at the volume coming in. Huge move to the upside. This one looks really good. Um, Facebook. Facebook's one of my favorite stocks going into 2020. Here is the break above 210 yesterday. That's clearing, uh, setting a new 52-week high. And if we go to the weekly chart, this one's still in that consolidation period. It is right up here at the high that we saw a year and a half ago. I believe this is going to be taken out. And when it does, um, I think we're going to see about a, I think Facebook's going to hit 300 in 2020. It's a bold prediction. Uh, let's see if we annotate this. Let me just show you what I'm referring to here. So let's just take this across. Right about there. Equal high, equal high, equal high, higher low. Well, a low and then higher lows coming in. So there is your ascending triangle. Uh, this measures from about 120 up to 210, that's 90. A breakout carries you to 300. And actually, if we did it on a percentage basis, potentially we might even be a little bit higher than 300. But uh, from 212 to 300, uh, that could be a you know, 35, 40% move. That would be uh, rather substantial and certainly help to carry the market higher. Okay. Um, one other large cap that I wanted to pull up, and I'll just leave it on this weekly chart, is Netflix. Actually, let's look at Netflix first on a daily chart. Um, let me just pull it up here. So on a daily chart, you can see it's been downtrending, moving back up. And I was not a fan of uh, Netflix for quite a while. I just wanted to see more relative strength. Here's a one-year chart. You can see we gap down. We're moving up into this gap-resistant zone. Uh, it kind of looks okay, but not great. And then if we pull up that relative strength chart, uh, you can see that uh, it had been downtrending for a while. But at this on this move where the volume came in and we, we uh, had this uh, nice advance, 
to go up and challenge this overhead resistance, that actually sent the relative strength of Netflix versus the internet stocks to about a four or five month high. So if internet stocks are gonna perform well in 2020, watch the relative strength here on Netflix. If we turn up and break out again, get some volume, take out this overhead resistance, I think initially I would look for a move to fill this gap up to about 362 or so. But I think further down the road, if we continue to show relative strength, look at the weekly chart here. Actually, and I'm gonna stretch this out. Let's go back like I did with the others about seven years. I think when you look at this, see this sideways consolidation here and then the breakout big move? Sideways consolidation here, breakout, pretty good move. Well, I think we're in a, in a symmetrical triangle. So not uh, the same as the ascending triangle, but a symmetrical triangle is just simply when you're able to connect lower highs and higher lows. See how that's squeezing? If we get that move up to 360, not only will we be testing and filling that gap, but we're also gonna be testing a pretty significant area of overhead resistance in the sideways consolidation pattern, which this is a continuation pattern, uptrend followed by a symmetrical triangle. So keep an eye on Netflix. This is one that uh, could also have a very strong 2020 if we get that breakout. All right, next up, let's go back to the scooters. Um, the other thing you can do in addition to in having this in scooter order, as you can see the change here yesterday and Netflix, Take Two Interactive actually had a pretty good move yesterday in terms of the scooter score, but net, Netflix uh, 14 and the scooter's only 32. Now looking at the daily chart, you'd understand why, why it's 32, but looking at the weekly chart, this is a strong company long-term. So yes, occasionally you're gonna get that, that scooter score to drop, but I, excuse me, I would be looking for Netflix to bounce back. All right, mid cap stocks. Um, looking at this list, I went through all of these. Um, I thought Baidu, it's coming off of a big downtrend, sideways consolidation, and now it seems to be got a, a gap up here, holding gap support, uh, the 20 day moving average. Now we got a continuation gap to open the year, another gap up. This one's starting to look a lot better after having gone through a lot. Uh, if you look on a weekly chart, look at how far we fell on Baidu, 280 plus, all the way down under 100. But it certainly looks to me like it's turning back around to the upside. Breakdown here on the weekly chart, big breakdown was about 155, but that's still 15% away. Another 20 bucks from 135 would be about 15%. Um, Spotify, look at the 12.5% jump yesterday in Spotify. If I pull this one up, this is one that you wanna watch for a breakout. So that's the daily chart, but look at the weekly chart. Look at all these tops coming in here around 155 to 160. We closed at 156.72. Spotify is one, and this was an earnings report back in October with big volume and it's continuing to move up. We could get another big report out of this company and we could be off to the races here. So these are all companies that are adding to the bullishness in this group. So really uh, noteworthy in my opinion. Small caps. Got a few more of these. Uh, you look at the top here. Cardlytics has been one of the best stocks, without a doubt. Huge earnings-related move here back in November. It is still trading near its high. This one is strong, just overbought. I mean, it uh, on the daily chart, you see it there at 60-some, not, not too bad. But on a longer-term chart, look at the overbought conditions here. Now, we, start, we became overbought back in August. Stock was at 30. It's still overbought, now it's 63. Overbought can remain overbought. It's just that when you jump in to an overbought stock, you have to be willing to take more of a risk because this stock has come back down, hasn't tested its 20 week moving average, but it's gotten close. And so maybe earnings coming up uh, for whatever reason, maybe the, a lot of it's just priced in, maybe there's a good report, the stock pulls back into the mid fifties, that would probably be a much better time to think about CDLX. The uh, other one that was on this list, EVER, I actually owned the stock and it had an awful day yesterday. It was down, well, it came off its low, but you can see the stock down 11% yesterday. Um, I still, I mean, if look at the weekly chart. Again, the daily chart below the 50, look at the weekly chart. Every time we get close to the 20 week moving average, test it or get close to it, it's been a pretty good buy. I think we've got a really solid uptrend in play, great volume trends. So pullback isn't, you know, I mean, these companies, this one went from $4 uh, 
$3, whatever this is, to $37 in a year. So consolidation wouldn't be a horrible thing. Clearly, there's a reason why a lot of folks are getting in here. So I wanted to mention EVR, uh, EVER as well. Um, one other stock, and I mentioned this yesterday at Earnings Beats. I do this same Trading Places uh, presentation over at Earnings Beats on Mondays and Wednesdays. CCOI was one of my three you must see yesterday. And stock had another nice day, up 1.5%. But this is one that had moved up, sideways consolidated for a while. Volume comes in, and we make another breakout. I think this one is another internet stock, and it's a small one, but another one that could do very well. All right, uh, how about we move into upgrades and downgrades? Um, I do want to go through here, just show you Aerojet, Rocketdyne. It is in the defense group, and of course, defense stocks. Since the uh, airstrike in Baghdad last week, you can see a lot of these defense stocks, AJRD, no exception, moving higher. I look for this uh, alpha, this uptrend. I think this is obviously a key support now. Your resistance is up near 52, 53. I think that's where we're heading. Uh, but in the meantime, it is a fairly small company. You got a $10 trading range. Uh, but the stock was upgraded. It's starting to show relative strength. I have no problems with this upgrade. Defense group as a whole just broke out, as you can see right here. So uh, this is one that I would be interested in. Uh, I did want to mention before we move to um, relatively speaking, I just want to go over some of these stocks that Citigroup announced today, they, they uh, initiated probably 10 stocks or so within the healthcare area with buys. So I wanted to bring those up and just show you those charts quickly. So BIO, this is BioRed Labs, nice uptrend. Uh, eh, volume can be a little challenging sometimes, but it has been a leader uh, in the medical equipment group, medical equipment strong. So BIO um, with a buy. TECH. Um, sideways consolidating, but off of this key su support area around 212. I think this one looks interesting as well. It's in the biotech space. BRKR, Bruker, lots of overhead resistance here at 52. Look for a heavy volume breakout there. This one also in medical equipment. EXAS, this is exact sciences, biotech, starting to trend higher. And I like this successful test of the 20 day. That generally is a sign that we could be going higher. A breakout above 100 uh, could lead to a test up near that 123 area. GH, Gardent Health, um, just uptrending slightly here over the past three months. Uh, still underperforming the biotechs as a whole, but maybe if we get that breakout, let's look for some relative strength. HOLX, I like this stock a lot. Um, this one was uh, uh, um, initiated with a buy. But look at the pullback here to test this breakout level. And if we look at the weekly chart, longer term weekly chart, uh, a lot of sideways consolidation there, but I'm gonna go back even further. Let's go back 10 years on the weekly chart. A lot of consolidation in the last four or five years, just starting to get a move here to the upside. Volume picked up on this latest push to the upside. So I think uh, HOLX is an interesting one going forward. ILMN, this is Illumina. And let's go back to that relative chart. This one hasn't been as good, but it is starting to pick back up again. Relative strength needs a lift. IQV, healthcare provider. Look at the move with volume right here. I think that broke that downtrend line. I believe we are going to uptrend above that 20 days. So keep an eye on that. QGEN, um, big gap down here. This one I don't like. I mean, there's, first of all, just the gaps would scare me to death. I wouldn't know what's coming next. 41 down to 30 and a half here from 32 down to 26. I mean, those are some big uh, gaps that I would want to try to avoid. So this one's not as appealing to me. Thermo Fisher though, I do like nice uh, bullish engulfing candle yesterday, right off the 20 day, another buy from City. All right, uh, relatively speaking, I just want to show you one or two quick things here on uh, relatively speaking. First, I keep a chart list of the uh, industry groups and I keep it on a relative strength basis. And one thing, you know, I've got all these, all of the industry groups here, 104 of them, I think. Um, if you go in and you've got a, this group and you click on the uh, view all and then switch this to summary, this will give you what happened yesterday. And so I can see aluminum, for instance, was the worst relative performer yesterday. Um, then you've got some others that you can follow. You can look over here, you can see the sector, the way I, I labeled it. I can see the sector pretty quickly here. 
A um, couple of uh, consumer areas, consumer discretion areas, not doing too well. And then I can pull up what did lead yesterday, internet. That's what we just talked about earlier. There's your internet stocks, brewers, second, toys, tires, so forth. Well, if you change the period to one month, take a look what's been leading. Here's autos. But look at this second group, and, and autos is pretty surprising too, but look at the second group here, which is the oil equipment and services group. Now, we have seen this before, so I'm not getting overly excited. Um, if we stretch this out even further, um, we have been downtrending for a long time in energy. And this particular group relative to the S&P, we have seen some head fakes, and this could be a head fake. But it also is coming off a very, very oversold area. This group has been just awful. This is the actual uh, absolute chart. This is the relative chart. Look at the absolute chart. 825 back in 2014. It's just above 250 now. So clearly this is an area that could outperform a weakening dollar. If it continues, could be a catalyst for areas like oil equipment services to outperform. All right, let's move on to the three you must see. And I'm going to start with um, Carnival, Carnival Corp CCL. Um, let's uh, stretch this out just a bit here. We'll go back three years. It's a daily chart. But what I'm seeing is a downtrend that was broken right here. To me, this is a character change. Heavy volume broke this downtrend, and now we've pulled back into this support area. Let's go back down to that one year so we can see the, this uh, gap area. So here was the, the move higher. This is what broke that downtrend. And this pullback is now into this gap support zone. I would be watching for either a reversing candle or a test of the bottom of gap support down around 46 and three quarters. One of those two areas could certainly serve as a major reversal area. So CCL is one I definitely would keep an eye on. Next up, CAE. Uh, I don't need the three years here. Let's go back to a one year. And here you can see move up, move back down, and then a rally. And off of this rally, we have a left shoulder, neckline, an inverse head, the right side of the neckline, an inverse right shoulder right off the 20-day moving average and a breakout on volume accelerating. That is a nice looking pattern. Uh, now the short term, 27 down to 25 and a half is a point and a half, that takes you to 28 and a half. But if we get that measurement, that means we clear the high back in July. So this is one I definitely would be watching, keeping an eye on. CRM. Salesforce.com, I have not been a fan here for quite a while, and the reason being was that their relative strength has been horrible. But this is a major breakout. Big volume, the relative strength turning up. I think all of a sudden, we now have a stock here in CRM that is relevant. Look at the breakout on this weekly chart. I think CRM looks good until further notice. This is a stock that I absolutely would be paying attention to now as we go forward. I'm going to bring it up on a long-term chart. When you look at CRM outside of this move in 2008, 2009, maybe a little bit of a pullback here, this has been a very, very steady performer that for a month, or excuse me, a year and a half went nowhere, underperformed badly versus its peers. Now it's making that breakout. Very, very nice move. All right, uh, that is going to wrap it up for today. Uh, I do want to remind you, I do have an event next week, Monday, January 13th, 4.30 p.m. on the January effect on the market and then also top 15 stocks of 2020. I'll be talking more about that on Thursday, give you some more details on how you can participate in that. In the meantime, everybody have a great day and uh, happy trading. Mm -hmm.